And now we'll begin to look at uh, the readings for the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, uh, which occurs on November 10th. Um, the theme of this, these readings, which is certainly um, brought out dramatically by the uh, uh, Gospel, in which uh, Jesus argues about the resurrection of the dead with the Sadducees. So, it's that sort of a reality. Now, we've already considered part one, when we considered purity of heart in contemplation. And now we're going to start the readings. And the first reading is 2 Maccabees 7, um, 1 to 2 and 9 to 14. And we're going to be looking at that. Um, the Maccabees, the word means hammer, Maccabeus, and... Um, this is the, the book that, reco- that uh, recalls and records the, uh, the exploits of this Maccabean clan who uh, literally threw off an overwhelmingly powerful um, force to be able to practice worship again. It's only when we're deprived of this means of worship, huh? when the English suppress the mass in Ireland. The Irish, the priest, priest and the people risk their lives to go and have the Eucharist and hear the word of God. Uh, so, they didn't have the Eucharist yet, but they had the word of God. And uh, so, they wanted to worship. And so, uh, this text begins then uh, to talk about that. And it starts then, it happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. Now you would think, eat a little bit of pork and forget it. I mean, what difference does it make? No. If we're faithful to God, we are faithful to God. God told us not to eat pork, so we don't. I remember a friend of mine, a good Jewish theologian, a rabbi, said, you know, God told us not to eat shrimp, I think it was, he said. Now, why don't I eat shrimp? I can't find anything wrong with it. I do that to show God that I love him, that I do what he tells me to do. So, it's the relationship between God and the people Though pork, especially in that kind of a culture where the pigs eat anything, it's a pretty disgusting animal. Uh, but I remember I was once at a picnic and uh, a wild uh, pig was up in the back of Haifa and they caught it and killed it and roasted it and we had that's what we had for, for the picnic. Anyway, uh, it happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. We are part of the people of God, and we are proud to have received this heritage from them, and we will not uh, go against it, even if it costs us our lives. These are the Maccabees, or these are the people who got inspired by the Maccabees. Um, At the point of death, skips a bit in the text here, at the point of death he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. Now remember, the theme of this liturgy is the resurrection of the dead. And so, the Maccabees were very clear about that. And you just heard this testimony uh, from this uh, one of these uh, Jewish boys. And then the, the, the text skips things. After him, uh, the thirds suffered uh, their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these, 
for the sake of his laws I disdained them. From him I hope to receive them again. Again, resurrection. At this point in the development of the Jewish understanding of their relationship to God, they were quite ready to understand that God's power reaches right through death and that we live. Only the word of God, only revelation from God brought this to anybody in the human race. There were some dreamy things going on here and there, but this, nobody willing to die for them. I would die for this uh, because I know that it's true. Um, now, after this boy had done this, you know, held out his hands, even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. And when he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men, with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. This is quite a remarkable text. This is before our Lord rose from the dead. Uh, they knew that God had bound himself to them right through death. And that if they, by his power, could remain faithful to him, they would be with God forever. And that's this um, teaching of the, the book of Maccabees here. Uh, it's quite beautiful. And you can see, uh, what does that say about human dignity? What does it say, you see? Uh, we are eternal. We're not just passing. How hard it is for people to get this, huh? Even, you know, in some dimensions of religion, there's this uh, sense of a, an unending continuation of the pleasures of this life. That's not eternal life. That's more of this life. Eternal life is union with God. With God, being animated by God's life. So that, um, as John Paul II says, in his commentary on Luke, while he's on the, this whole thing about the Sadducees not thinking there's going to be a resurrection. And he says, you know, it's by the power of God and it's by the life of God. God's life is at the root of our existence. We live now by God's life forever. And we're inundated, we're overwhelmed with the joy of being united to God and have the uh, real joy, secondary compared to God, but real, of being with millions of people who love God and know that they'll never lose Him. They will always be with Him and we will be with them. That's heaven. And that's, you see, implied in the resurrection. I'm not just going to be a, a, a spirit floating around someplace. It's got to be me, Francis, with my body, forever. If only I managed to arrive at resurrection from the dead, as Paul says, you see. And if I try to obey him and get my sins forgiven when I don't, you see, I will die animated by the Spirit of God and having had my body touch the body and blood of Christ. And as St. Irenaeus says, it is impossible for a body into which the body, the risen body of the Lord has come, it's impossible that that person see corruption forever unless they turn from God. But if they don't, that Eucharist makes that body immortal. And that's so important for us, you see. Now we're reading about already the anticipation of this certainty, this promise in the book of Maccabees. Uh, and so uh, then uh, the king in a fury 
ordered pans and cauldrons to be heated over a fire. As soon as these were red hot, he commanded that their spokesman should have his tongue cut out, his head scalped, that means cut off his scalp, like the Indians used to do, and his extremities cut off, while the other brothers and his mother looked on. They're there, they've got to watch this. He's hoping to frighten them. Huh? When he had been rendered completely helpless, the king brought, gave orders for him to be brought, still breathing, to the fire and fried alive in a pan. As the smoke from the pan drifted about, his mother and the rest encouraged one another to die nobly with such words as these. The Lord God is watching and certainly feels sorry for us. As Moses declared in his song, which clearly states that he will take pity on his servants. When the first had left the world in this way, they brought the second forward to be tortured. And after stripping the skin from his head and hair, they asked him, Will you eat some pork before your body is tortured limb by limb? Replying in his ancestral tongue, he said, Lo, no. So he too was put to torture in his turn. Okay? Uh, now that's more than our reading has. Uh, after he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. And when he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. And so, uh, uh, I'm going to read more from the text than we have with the reading. But you see, the clarity and the courage that these people had. They were willing to, to be tortured and killed to be faithful to God. You see how at least we can try to have that same concern for this whole country of ours, that we not be bewitched or daunted by fear, but that we remain faithful to God and preach Jesus Christ, his love, his deity, his cross, his resurrection, and our resurrection with him. You see? Now, just a few words on uh, what was left of our time. In Psalm 17, Lord, the, the refrain is, Long, Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I'm going to see all of your glory. Hearken, O Lord, to a just suit. Attend to my outcry. I'd love to read this. I had it open. Here it is. Um, because I want to read with the little time I've got. I better not try. I don't have the time. Um, Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. My steps have been steadfast in your past. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I in justice shall behold your face. And I waking, I shall be content in your presence. I will die, but I will wake and I will be in your presence. Oh God, I cannot imagine what that's like. We can, because Jesus came back and we know him. And we feed on his body and blood. But I know, Lord, that you will be just, that I will be with you for eternity. Amen.